somewhere between material science and archaeology. Oh, there's a worm. Found another worm. These ones are big chunks, but not of glass. Just rocks. The problem is, is that glass that's been buried for 50 years looks a lot like a rock. Oh! Ta da! This might be the glass marble, potentially. Boom! Another one? Yeah. It's the marble. I could probably need to go slightly further this way just to make sure I'm not missing any. So they might have gone right up to the, the top. The project's been running since 1970 when a set of archaeological glasses were buried um, for the purpose of determining how they corroded in alkaline soil versus acidic soil. Um, the project was quite optimistic, it was meant to run for about 500 years um, and so far I think samples were unearthed at, at one year, at two years, at eight years, um, 16 years, uh, 32 years and then the next set was um, due to be dug up uh, 64 years after burial. Um, but we've dug them up a little bit early because of, um, because of another reason for investigating the samples that's come online since then. And that's the, the interest in glass corrosion brought about by burying our vitrified um, nuclear waste in a subsurface repository. Um, so this new interest uh, in the samples from that point of view um, meant that we got some funding to dig them up um, at 50 years. Um, so alongside the original archaeological glass samples, there are um, samples of UK glasses, of um, US nuclear waste glass uh, simulants, um, and, and I think a Russian glass as well. So um, we've got a range of archaeological glass compositions and we've got um, surrogate nuclear waste glasses, which are nuclear waste glasses without the radioactivity. The top of the um, site A of the mound, you can see there's some roots growing down into it. So. It's probably been quite significantly disturbed since the samples were buried. Um, just clearing away the top layer of moss here, and you can see these is, this is the limestone chatter that they've used to hopefully keep the pH um, as high as they wanted, which was round about nine. Um, I thought we'd have to dig down a bit deeper than this, but actually the moss is literally just, look, it's just pulling away like that. It's just on the top surface. So somewhere in this zone should be five glasses. Um, the problem is they might look quite similar to these bits of stone, so we'll have to go down quite carefully so we don't miss them. So we just found a tiny, tiny glass sample that was much smaller than we'd expected. So we're traveling the spoil heap to make sure we haven't missed any similarly tiny glass samples. Um, we're going a lot slower now because we know at least there's something in this hole. Um, we're not quite sure which part of the hole the tiny glass sample came from. We're hoping to find another. There should be eight, if the sheep can be believed. Oh, cool. oh there's another one. Excellent. Baldwin was chosen um, to be an alkaline site um, in contrast to Wareham, which was a, a site that was an acidic burial site. So the, the same glasses that were buried at Baladon were originally buried at Wareham. Um, unfortunately, we have lost track of the Wareham samples but the Baladon samples continue to be useful um, from the point of view of nuclear waste disposal um, because we expect the pH in a, a future subsurface repository um, to be alkaline, um, both because of the dissolution of glass um, putting the pH up and also because of the dissolution of cementitious material in a geological repository. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long we dig for if we can't find them. How deep do you think we go, Roman? <laughs> Keep going. Um, so the first thing that happens when glass dissolves um, is there's exchange between the alkali metals in the glass um, 
and the hydronium ions in solution. Um, at the same time as this, water starts to break down the, um, the silicon oxygen and boron oxygen um, bonds in the glass network via hydrolysis. Um, and together these processes usually drive the pH up um, in the immediate vicinity of the glass. In a soil, this process might not quite happen in the same way as it does in a laboratory experiment because there are other things um, also coming into account. So the dissolution of minerals, the um, influx of rainwater, um, any groundwater flow um, that might be happening. So there's a lot of processes um, occurring in a, a real complex natural environment um, that would, we wouldn't necessarily see in a static laboratory setting. We've also taken swabs from the samples themselves to look at uh, the microbial communities that might be associated with the glass surface. So in, in previous, um, previous work looking at glasses exposed to natural environments, there's been shown to have been a difference in the community in the soil compared to the community um, directly at the glass surface, so implying that, that microbes are actually uh, feeding off elements within the glass. The person who remembers this project best here at the University of Sheffield is Professor Russell Hand, and this project was passed down to us by him um, to be custodians into its, into its future. We're just here at the Turner Museum looking at some of the old photographs of uh, the Balladon field study site. So uh, this is an early excavation at the Balladon Quarry uh, field study site. Um, uh, this will be an excavation of archaeological glass um, in 1978, about eight years after they were buried there. So quite an early excavation. Um, no nuclear glasses uh, buried there at this time. And a few years later in 1991, looking at its usual overgrown self, that's the Baladon site again. And about that time, I think actually this was in 2003, um, uh, an American uh, scientist, uh, George Wicks, came over here and he excavated some US uh, nuclear glasses that they buried there a couple of years beforehand. And at the same time, they buried more US simulant nuclear glasses. A couple of years later, looks like somebody's been round it with a, a lawnmower this time. Oh, this is Russell Hand in uh, 2010. Russell is the member of staff here who's got the longest association with the uh, Balladon project going around, going back to around about 2000, I think. So because these are such unique samples, we want to take our time analysing them, make sure we get it right. Um, so they'll take as long as necessary, which could be the course of, of Gary's uh, PhD project. Interestingly, previous openings of Balladon didn't have access to quite the level of, of techniques that we'll be able to throw at these current samples. Um, so we should be able to go into a lot more detail in in really getting down to the micro and possibly even the nano scale and looking at those alteration layers. Um, so this, this set of samples will be better analysed than previous sets. What we did was we poured resin into one of these plastic moulds um, after putting the glass sample down at the bottom of the mould. Um, that then's left overnight and it sets in about nine hours and after that the, the resin is hard and that can then be taken to a, a polishing wheel um, and we can polish the surface of the glass as a cross-section so that you can take that sample to be imaged. Um, so we'll take an initial look um, looking with scanning electron microscopy so that will sort of give us images on the micron scale um, of the alteration layers. We'll be able to look at their chemistry um, and a little bit at their, um, their mineralogy but because these layers will still be quite small, 50 years still isn't long in terms of glass dissolution, um, we'll probably have to look a little deeper and this could be done by um, transmission electron microscopy, which could um, look for um, sort of microcrystalline material, um, nanocrystalline material, 
and also possibly going um, to the beam line and looking at these um, under synchrotron, under synchrotron. So this would give information on the speciation of um, elements in the alteration layers, for example, iron. This is a new study that you're putting on now, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least we don't have to use so much epoxy though, because you know I was yeah. worried that yeah, the epoxy yeah. wouldn't last. Yeah. They were all in all. Oh. Uh, so I guess that's just us saying we've finished. We've found 35 glass samples and now we've got to tidy the place up and leave it as we found it. Pegs out. Er. Bye.